You are listening to the Foreign Policy Focus Podcast. We cannot wait for the final proof. The smoking gun it could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. Haven't you driven enough people from their homes over bulldoze their villages, seize their property and their laws? They have no part in making Now working in Libya with friends and allies, we've demonstrated what collective action can achieve in the 21st century. Now the host of the show, Kyle Inslee. This is episode 275 of the Foreign Policy Focus podcast. Joining me on today's show is a very special guest. Uh, you may know him uh, mostly as Mance Raider, or Pete Mance Raider Raymond now. But either way, this is a guest of the show. He is the host of the Free Man Beyond the Wall podcast. He's a previous guest of this show, episode 201, and that will be linked in the show notes page. He's the author of a couple books. Uh, highly recommend Freedom Through Meme Dumb. I think it's a 30-day guide to waking up liberty. And then his other book, which I haven't had the pleasure of reading, um, The Kids Are Not All Right. Hey, man, how are you doing? Doing good, Kyle. How are you? Doing well. You know, I got you on the show today to talk, um, you know, kind of anti-war movement in general and then, you know, specifically like kind of the mediums that we use to to message uh, the anti-war movement. Uh, you know, you, you've you been a voice that has really exploded onto the liberty and really the anti-war scene um, as much as, you know, you post a lot of memes about libertarian stuff. I think some of your greatest is more the anti-war, which is certainly a libertarian position, uh, but, you know, some of your best hard hitting ones and i'm sure the ones you take the most heat from you know kind of the social media sites from are are the anti-war ones but i want to start off talking about an episode of your show uh episode 152 and that'll be linked in the show notes page where you interview angela keaton and scott horton on their uh, i guess you know kind of coming into the libertarian movement and uh, one thing that I thought was really interesting is that they talk about getting their start on pirate radio. And, uh, you know, this is non-government controlled radio uh, that was running out of Austin. And, you know, it's kind of interesting that, you know, the, in the new day, we don't have pirate radio as much. But, you know, me and you host podcasts and uh, the FCC has nothing to do with it. So, what you know, what do you think about kind of that part of the whole, you know, having to get around the government to get out our message? Well, I mean, that's the great thing about podcasts, but you know, there look, look at uh look at somebody like Alex Jones. I mean, I don't agree with Alex Jones on probably most things, but I mean, I I support 100% his right to be out there and have a show and he's been kicked off of basically a whole bunch of platforms and everything. So, I mean, I I really wonder if if we're going to come to the day where not the FCC cracking down on podcasts and especially anti-war podcasts. I mean, we've seen what they've done with some anti, how they've treated some anti-war people, especially on Twitter. But I mean, I, I know for a fact, we know for a fact um, that like the Intercept reported last year in uh, December of 2017, that Facebook, uh, that Facebook was taking down certain accounts at the behest of the U.S. government and the Israeli government. So if Facebook is one of these, you know, one of these companies that gets insane tax breaks, basically they're getting free money from the American taxpayer and they're taking their orders from the government. I don't even really know how we call these private companies anymore if they're just, you know, and then we see them act in concert. Like if Facebook takes something down, then Twitter follows. So, I mean, I can really see a war coming where maybe something like anti-war radio, uh, at, you know, like anti-war dot com um, or anti-war radio or Scott, you know, the Scott Horton show or foreign policy focus. Maybe iTunes says no or podcasting hosts say, say no. And I really think we have to start looking for for alternative ways to get the message out there. And I think that, you know, some are. Some are coming up, um, you know, like the Alex Jones show was using, started using BitChute. And then last week, PayPal said, you can't, 
which was BitChute was using PayPal as their main payment. You know, people would donate to them, um, premium services, stuff like that. PayPal said, no, we're not going to use you anymore. And I mean, I assume it has something to do with, you know, the fact that they were, you know, they started streaming Alex Jones. But um, yeah, I I don't, uh, you know, it's, I think anti- the people who are putting the anti-war message out there um, may have a huge target on their backs for uh, censorship. And I don't think the censorship is all private. I think that uh, I think a lot of these quote unquote private companies are working at the behest of the United States government and maybe and foreign governments, too. Right. And I, I mean, these connections become clear from time to time when, you, you know, you talk about the intercept story of uh, Facebook censoring things for the U.S. government. And you start to realize that Silicon Valley companies like Amazon uh, have pretty deep ties to the U.S. and get massive contrast from the Pentagon. And once you're on the government dole in that way, you know, it's hard to think that these companies will be a very independent minded or independent thinking. Uh, they're going to, I, I would guess, start to, you know, suck up more and more to the government. And, you know, we already know that Facebook, one of the ways they decide, you know, what's real and fake news or who should be kicked off, uh, they have the Atlantic Council advising them. This is, you know, straight up NATO's think tank. Uh, this is, you know, government money funneled, funneled around and funneled into Facebook. And if Facebook wants to keep the money coming, I'm guessing they're going to think of, you know, doing things that at least don't rock the establishment boat too much. Uh, you know, maybe they could, you know, blot some pro-Trump content or something like that. But, you know, when they start getting into the war profits they're gonna have issues i think you know as libertarians you know as an anarchist like i am i want everything to be free market i want to leave private companies alone but you know i think thaddeus russell in a recent debate where he took the side that you know facebook you know facebook and twitter these are not private companies anymore um you know i'm not for the government stepping in because the government is the problem. I mean, how is the the government's going to step in and fix Facebook where a lot of what's wrong with Facebook is being caused by the government. But I really think that if people demanded that, you know, Facebook not receive any kind of subsidies or not receive and, um, or at least just tell people to just abandon these platforms. You know, I mean, I know that, you know, boomers and older people aren't, they're used to these platforms. They don't want to learn something new. They're very happy with them. But I hear more and more young people every day saying that, you know, they're not on Facebook. Um, I, I recently started a uh, Patreon account uh, and I wanted to set up a private group where I could talk to, I could talk to people. And I, I was going to do it on Facebook, but it was like so many of the people who joined up said, I'm just not on Facebook anymore. And if I do have a Facebook account, I just don't use it anymore. So, you know, if people aren't using Facebook and people are, you know, a lot of people just hate the the sewer that is Twitter, um, you know, they're finding alternative means to do it. But I mean, I really think that, you know, libertarians, anarchists, minarchists, whoever, whoever, whatever you, you know, wherever you're at. Please realize that these are really not private. If if they're if they're taking marching orders from the Atlantic Council or you know the United States or Israeli government, abandon. Tell everybody to abandon. Go make an account on you know something else and tell your friends to go over there. There are there are platforms out there where you can tailor them to yourself, where you can start your own channel, you could start your own server. You know, and you know why would you why would you want to be at the you know, at the mercy, basically, of you know Facebook, which doesn't even you know changes the algorithm all the time. I remember Free Talk Live was talking about how they used to get 19 million impressions a week on Facebook, and it, like after they changed the alg- algorithms around, it went down to 50,000. So I mean, why why even give them your business? I mean, I barely spend any time on Facebook anymore. You know, maybe a couple, you know, maybe a few minutes a day posting something up or announcing a new pot not announcing a new podcast episode but you know it just it doesn't seem yeah it's not worth it really uh, one of the other things that I thought was a really good highlight of your show with Angela and Scott was just them uh, talking about how uh, they're really interested in focusing on kind of the big issue, like the anti-war issue, uh, the drug issue, um, and and those kind of things. So I guess uh, is that the direction you know you think the libertarian movement should be you know generally focusing on to? Well, think about. The last time that the libertarian movement really had a big push, 2008, especially Ron Paul, um, 2012, 
Ron Paul. What was what were the two big things that he talked about? He talked about you know a humble foreign policy, you know, no enta- entangling alliances with none, uh, you know, trade with all, and he talked about ending the Fed. I mean, the anti-war message, especially seventeen years into Afghanistan, I and mean, you can get you. If you just approach it from this isn't fair to the troops, you can get the most pro-military people to start really seeing it. You know, if you just start explaining to them that, you know, there's nothing going on over there that, that you know, is, that's beneficial. I mean, no one over there is fighting for your freedoms. You know, they're, it's, it's a quagmire. Um, I really think the anti-war, the anti-war message, um, the war on drugs, I think, you know, what well, we have 33 states now that have some sort, some form of marijuana legalization, whether it be legalization or whether it be medicinal. I mean, there is no reason that anyone should be sitting in prison right now for a plant, especially, I mean, there's no reason anyone should be sitting in prison for a nonviolent crime. And yet that's what, where we are right now is we have, I think, 2.3 million people in jail and half of them are in there for nonviolent crimes. I think that's a re- another easy thing, especially one-on-one. When you're talking to people face-to-face, they're much more likely to listen to what you have to say and have a conversation than arguing online. People just don't, people don't know how to act online. You know, they, they say things online that they wouldn't say in person and they are, you know, they get more agitated online where they wouldn't do that in person. So, yeah, I mean, I really think the anti-war message and, uh, the legalizing drugs message and you know, end the Fed. You know why? You know why does a price? You know why does the price of food keep going up because they're devaluing the money? I mean that's something that you should be. If you're talking to a housewife, I mean they're the one who, who's probably going to be in charge of the money, and they'll see that more than anyone. So you, know, you just have to have a strategy, and I think those three things uh, are definitely, definitely on people's minds nowadays. And um, I think a lot of them look to Trump for it. And maybe Trump is getting ready to do some criminal justice reform. That would be great, you know. And But I don't know what he's going to do about the Fed. And it definitely, the Middle East looks like a horror show, especially having Bolton there, um, you know, and constantly just this talk about Iran and, and demonizing Iran while buddying up to Saudi Arabia. I mean, I really think... I think people are starting to open their eyes to the foreign policy thing. And I think that's where, um, more than anything, foreign policy is where we should be concentrating our, uh, concentrating our efforts. I think people are, people are even way more open to that than the money issue or the, uh, or the drug or criminal justice reform issue. You know, I, I saw on Twitter recently, and I think I talked to you about this as well, that you got to attend a pretty awesome Ron Paul event. And uh, I'm going to link in the show notes page to a speech by Scott Horton there, which may be the greatest half hour of Scott Horton I've ever heard. And that's saying an awful lot. Man, so I don't know if you have anything from that conference you'd like to mention, but uh, I just was thinking about it. And, man, I, I saw that picture with you and Ron Paul, and I'm pretty jealous. Well, I mean... I was 10 feet away from Scott Horton when he delivered that speech. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was great. I mean, the first, he basically had a half hour and spent 21, 22 minutes talking about how important Ron Paul was to his life. You know, I think it said it was the first, it was the first time they had ever shared a stage together. And, you know, we talked that weekend about, you know, really reaching out. If you want to have an anti-war message right now, you really have to reach out to the right. You really, if the right starts going anti-war, foreign policy is going to be cleaned up. I I mean, if you have people on the right, if you have people that call themselves conservatives, if you have people that refer to themselves as deplorables, you know, wanting to change foreign policy, it's going to happen. Whenever the left, if they ever become anti-war again, decides to, you know, decides to be, they're not taken seriously because, you know, they can't, they never seem to be able to express their uh, express what their message is beyond something that's very emotional but i mean if you have if you have soul if you have 
ex-military, um, you know, in their in their uniform in their uniforms, talking about how we have to end this, and you know, they're on the right, and you know, you have a president like Trump who just absolutely lionizes law enforcement and the military. Um, he's going to listen, and he's going to listen to his constituency. So, I mean, when you look at the military industrial complex and what's been built since you know they since the Pentagon opened up, it looks like a daunting task, but. I'm of the opinion that if the people want something, politicians are going to do it. And it just seems like they've done a really good job in in recent history of making people forget about what's important and concentrate more on, you know, how how Trump talks to the press or, you know, what kind of language he uses or, you know, his his divorces or things like that you know whenever you see anybody having debate anymore and it's political debate especially on twitter especially in the news just turn on the news it's nothing of substance it's all just it's all fluff it's all stuff that we shouldn't have to worry about the way you know what whether he uses four letter words and you know on a regular basis or you know what what he's if he's dog whistling quote unquote to one group forget all that what's important you know the economy is important uh, war is important foreign policy is important um getting people getting people out of jail is important i mean just i i really think scott you know i, th- I really think scott's right that you really have to reach out to the right and uh speak their language I mean, I, I think I agree with that because you can't imagine a, a bunch of lefties like just going crazy and, uh, you know, hoping for nuclear war or something like that. But that being said, I mean, the, the Trump thing with Russia and, you know, even like the, their positions on North Korea are absolutely insane. And so as much as it may be great that we move the right, it may just move the left in the other direction because they seem to be so terrible. Although I did recently do an episode with uh, Joanne Leon and she talked about kind of the left wing and that there is, you know, a significant number, I think, of the actual, like, people who vote Democrat do care about the war message and would vote for a candidate who had a, a better war platform. Um, I will say some proof that I think reaching out to the right is working. On Veterans Day, I was watching the NASCAR race. I'm a big NASCAR fan. And, of course, I, I hate watching the race on Veterans Day typically because it's just one, uh, you know, thank the troops after another. But there was one uh, soldier who wasn't in his, like, fatigues but was just in civilian clothes had his arm around a driver and was wearing a ron paul shirt and so i like started jumping up and i was all excited and and i i thought it was a really cool thing to see um man here the other thing i want to talk to you about is specifically the uh minds.com social network you did a interview with the the ceo of minds and if you want to take just a few minutes maybe uh try to convince my audience to go get a minds account well bill ottman is not going to do what facebook has done i mean he's it's it's almost completely decentralized his whole goal right now it is partially on the ethereum blockchain and but it's still partially on the internet well he just received um six million dollars in venture capital from medici which is a company that's owned by Patrick Byrne, who is the uh, CEO uh, and founder of Overstock.com, very into blockchain. Um, But like I said, he he started a VC company, and all he does is invest in blockchain technology. And what they're what they're looking to do is they're looking to put it on the blockchain. If if you have a social media site that is 100 percent on the blockchain, the only way to regulate that, that the government could get their claws in it is one, if the owner, if the the people who ran it let them or two, to shut down the Internet. So I switched over. I opened up a Minds account two years ago and I just didn't use it. And after I saw the way Facebook was treating people and deleting, like, Free Thought Project, one of my favorite accounts, uh, Cop Block, one of my favorite accounts, and then I saw the way Twitter treats people, uh, you know, uh, Peter Van Buren, I mean, getting rid of him for basically making a joke and suspending Scott and uh, Daniel McAdams for 24 hours for coming to Peter's, uh, you know, having Peter's back, you know, I just decided I wanted to do something different. So I started a Minds account. It's sort of 
it's it's sort of a hybrid between like Twitter and Facebook. Um, you can get in, you post stuff up like Twitter, but you can get the conversations and comments are sort of like a more Facebook kind of thing. Uh, the app on Android, I haven't used it on on an iPhone, but on Android, the app is really good. Um, the 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 interface uh, on a web browser is really good. You can earn tokens which are you know basically like uh their own token on the ethereum blockchain which you can use to boost your posts so you know use one token to boot i usually use it like when i put an episode of my podcast up there i'll use a few tokens to boost it and that means that a thousand people a thousand people see it or get impressions a thousand additional people and just by posting on social media twitter and facebook that I'm over there. I've had a lot of people say, I, you know, I created a Minds account. And now I'm posting stuff over there because you, you know, because you, you announced it. And I see you're posting a lot of stuff over there. So, you know, I hate Facebook. I hate Twitter. And this place seems pretty good. And my, for, for Patreon, my private group is over there. Now, we're not, we're, we're not really that active right now. I'll post up messages and people will post up questions and stuff like that. You know, we're not going crazy, but, um, you, you can make a private group, uh, a closed group over there if you want. You can have an open group over there if you want. And um, I just think that if you're if you're worried about government control and you're worried about seeing, you know, seeing something get taken down, a company, a company that's created a platform that is going to go th- that is aiming to be 100 percent on the blockchain is just it's something else, man. That is, it really excites me. That's why I spend more time over there and they're not silencing anybody. I think there was a glitch where somebody didn't see one of my posts or they tried to share it and it wouldn't share. And, um, you know, help and, uh, you know, the help group over there just said, it, it's a glitch. There's not, you know, there's nothing we can do about it unless he wants to delete it and, you know, repost it. So, I mean, they're still working on some things, but I mean, that was the only, I've never had a problem and that's the only problem I've ever heard of. So, I mean, I, I really think it's just important for you know they say you know oh well if you don't you know if you're a free market person and you don't like this well go go start your own well bill ottman did and uh, i think it's really good i mean there's other things out there too that are doing really well but um you know like liberdon and you know there's mastodon uh liberdon's a, a separate server uh there's me we but I love the fact that this is blockchain oriented. And, you know, to me, when I hear blockchain, all I think is decentralized. And when I think decentralized, all I think is out of the hands of the government. And, you know, as an anarchist, that's really important to me. Yeah. Also, if that wasn't enough to convince you, man says the best group name ever over there is the free folk. So if you're a libertarian, I can't imagine that you shouldn't be in uh, Mance's. Is that your private group or do you have an? It's open actually group? my private group. But um, well, I, I don't want to um, I don't want to say I don't want it to go by and think that I came up with that name myself. Um, the original name of that group was the Wildlings. And um, also a really good libertarian name for a group. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm trying to see. Ba, ba, ba. I want to give someone credit for uh, for actually coming up with the name with the name of that. But um, that was da, 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 da. well. Got a it. couple more things I could plug about mines real quick is just that uh, the phone app was terrible about six months ago, but it's really great now. Uh, the whole site like moves extremely efficiently for me. Uh, there's a couple things that definitely need to be improved, like the search feature. But overall. Uh, it's definitely better use of your time than Facebook. Yeah, the um, user calling himself Nephilim, he said uh, the first day he joined, he said, new here and disappointed the group's not called the Free Folk. And I was like, immediately, I'm like, oh, there we go. Let's change it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I I like, I, I just like the interface and I like the whole idea. I like the philosophy behind it. It's like, you know, when I first figured out what, cryptocurrency was what the whole philosophy behind cryptocurrency was i immediately was attracted to it because it's about decentralization and being out of the hands of government the irs and you know all of them so uh man so i was wondering if you have any uh personal experience with facebook or twitter bans and uh maybe just to share the kind of posts that you were uh, had up when you, you received a ban i was just recently suspended for 72 days uh, 72 hours 
and it was over a weekend too. They did it on like Saturday on a, on a Friday morning, so I had no weekends access. I couldn't you know announce my Friday podcast or anything like that. And it was a it was an anti war meme. It was uh, right around the time when these quote unquote bombs were being sent to politicians' houses. Um, I there a meme a meme came out. I do not know who created it because I didn't. But it was a picture of a drone, and it said, I wonder how Obama feels having bombs sent to his house. Obviously referring to the fact that Obama, you know, a lot of people call him Obama because he bombed so many, you know, dropped so many bombs and bombed so many countries in eight years. But, um, yeah, I was uh, – that was against their community standards. Uh, the previous suspension I had for that uh, on Facebook was – I had put up, a, I had taken a picture, there's a meme that I created, and it was a picture of uh, a mass grave in Nazi Germany, and there was a couple soldiers walking over the bodies, and I put, I added the text, technically, this is a government program. And they suspended it, they suspended me for 24 hours because of hate speech. That was their, their excuse was hate speech. So I said, I I contested it, and I said, this isn't hate speech. Tell me why, why I'm, uh, why I'm being suspended. And they said, no, it's hate speech. And we're not, we're not arguing with you. So yeah, I mean, this is just Facebook. I mean, Twitter, um, I, I've been suspended from Twitter a couple of times. Uh, normally it's, yeah, I mean, it's a couple of times things that I posted, but it's been so long since I've been suspended from Twitter. I can't even remember what it was for. I think one time it was just for arguing with someone and the person got all, you know, got all sad because I guess I insulted him or something like that. And uh, they reported me and Twitter decided to give me a little vacation. Well, that seems to be the, at least the thing about Twitter is unless you like rub somebody the wrong way and they go on a little, uh, you know, fit against you and, and report you and have all their friends report you. I don't know. Twitter at least ne has never bothered me. Facebook, on the other hand, will regularly, uh, you know, like either – I feel like a, a lot of anti-war posts I put up there, you at least like have to click on for mature content. I shared a Yemen one from the New York Times of all places at one point, and they censored it for a while. Eventually, I, they did correct that, and I think they may have issued a statement about it uh, because uh, quite a few people had shared that and got like a child pornography warning or something about that. But it was just, you know, a little uh, Yemeni baby starving to death. And, you know, trying to expose what Saudi Arabia is doing there. Uh, but anyways, you know, Facebook really doesn't put that content out in front of people. And if you, you're sharing stuff uh, that, you know, anti-war, it does seem that that's where uh, they take the most offense. Uh, man, I guess, do you have any other recommendations on uh, if you're looking, you know, to, to spread the anti-war message on a social media platform? Uh, what 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 you do, what what gets you, you clits or lights or whatever the hell you need? I mean, if you have a lot of if you have a lot of friends on Facebook or a lot of followers on Twitter, just go to any and start, you know, sharing the sharing the, the articles from there and go to your favorite anti-war website and just start sharing articles and, you know, just don't share them, you know, make sure when you share them to put, you know, to put a catchy message up there. Um, you know, if you know how to make memes, make memes. If you don't know how to make memes, there's plenty of groups or accounts out there that, sh that, that make, uh, that share memes all the time and just retweet them or share them on Facebook. And if it's a private group on Facebook, then just save it to your phone and retweet it public, you know, um, reshare it publicly. I mean, anything you can do. I mean, I've told, I mean, I, <laughs> I've had people. There's one guy in particular on Facebook, great guy. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't have permission to give his name, so I'm not going to give his name. But he told me that before I, you know, my, my interviews with Jeremy Hammond and sharing, sharing stories about, um, sharing stories about what's going on in Palestine. He said he went from somebody who actually read and studied and basically idolized Zionist literature to being completely you know, to being pro-Palestinian, not being pro-Palestinian, but just to realize who the aggressor is, you know, in the, to realize Israel's in the wrong. And I mean, that's, I, that's powerful, man. I, I have people all the time tell me, you know, I had one person tell me, uh, Chardon, who's, you know, one of my, you know, one of the people who donates to my Patreon and somebody that I, I really I, has become 
you know, somebody who I rely on for counsel, he he told me that he became an anarchist because of the memes I shared. He said he was a nice minarchist and, you know, realized that the government was, you know, government was a mess. And he said, because of the memes I was sharing that he you know, abandoned all hope in the government. I mean, that's, I have people tell me that all the time, DM me and, you know, direct message, private message. And I mean, I just think that I think anything you can do, literally anything you can do, but sharing articles, um, you know, and now that on Facebook, Free Thought Project, their page is gone. Just go to Free Thought Project's website and share a story about, you know, th this unbelievable police state. I just saw, shared one today about cops pulled over this woman for DUI, suspicion of DUI, ended up, in a, ended up arresting her. She had a four-year-old sleeping in the back and a baby. They took the baby out but left the four-year-old in the back seat when they went to the impound lot. And it was like freezing temperatures out, and the kid almost got hypothermia. And and it's like, I, I, <laughs> I mean, I shared this, and I'm like, and this is the you know to give you an idea of the kind of kind of comment you want with this when you want to attract attention. I said, you know, I said people who really love the cops, and I call them bootlickers, will will blame the mother for this. When it was obviously the cops who, whose whose fault it was that the kid was back there, they should. Ha I mean, what if what what is this whole thing about the cops pulling someone over and not checking the whole car? I thought they'd do that on every traffic stop now. Oh, it smells like weed. I I think I smell weed. We got to check your whole car. But they leave. They forgot the four year old. I guarantee you if there was a dime bag in there, they would have got that. But they missed the four year old sleeping in the back seat. Come on. I was going to say, I've, I've witnessed, you know, police officers, you know, crawl underneath seats and, you know, go through all kinds of nasty stuff in cars looking for weed. I can't imagine how they could possibly leave a, a four-year-old child. It's not an infant, so it's not like you could have, like, an excuse you didn't see it in the bad seat. Well, the that's, thing, that's unbelievable. The thing that pisses me off about stories like that is, you know, the person who immediately jumps to defend the police... It's the same kind of person who would say people are innocent until proven guilty. Well, and they'll blame the mother. Well, the mother hasn't been convicted of anything, hasn't, you know, hasn't pleaded to anything yet. That's the thing I don't understand about modern policing. It's like, oh, you know, Joe Arpaio, you know, he had this, what he called the concentration camp, which was a county jail. Do you know that people in, most people in county jail haven't been convicted of anything? They're awaiting trial. And I just don't understand people. I, I do not understand this fascination with po with worshiping policy enforcers, especially when you see when they're human and they make mistakes. And I mean, and they make horrible mistakes, like leaving a four year old in the back of a friggin van in freezing weather. I just these are the kind of things you share on social media and you get people talking. I mean. I don't know how many people, I mean, I, I rail on the police. I am constantly, I would say one of every five or six episodes, I'm talking about the abuses of the police. I'm talking about a group of people in this society alongside us who possess rights that we don't. If you care about freedom and liberty and all that, how do you allow a class of people to have rights that you don't? And people just don't it's the cognitive dissonance man it doesn't get it doesn't go through there it's like the whole it's like the people who still say we got to fight them over there or else we'll be fighting them over here people still say that i mean I, that's like so 10 years ago you know right well on uh monday's show i was talking about how the united states is blaming uh you know assad and iran for the rise of isis like the rise of the Islamic State wouldn't have happened without, you know, George Bush's war in 2003 and then Obama's program of arming and backing uh, the Syrian resistance. And this is admitted by Secretary of State John Kelly and predicted by then Director of National Intelligence Michael Flynn. So it's not like you have like radicals in the government saying this. It's straight out of the, the mouth of the state. And even then people will still, you know, kind of that bootlicker attitude you talk about say, oh, it's the mother there's fault are just like people believing that it was the fault of Anwar al uh daughter or son for getting killed by the United States over there in a drone strike in the rain. That, that, that whole Calvinistic argument of, well, you know, th th they sh th it's, it's their fault that that's their dad. I mean, I've actually heard people make the argument that um, al children, it's, it can't, it's, it's the dad's fault. 
or it's their fault for being born to the de- being born into that family. I mean that that whole cal- you know something that John Taylor Gatto, rest in peace, just died a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, talked about how the the indoctrination in this country and the whole the whole Prussian school model is so based on on like classic Calvinism of well, this is what you were born into, almost like a caste system of this is what you were born into and this is what you're supposed to do and we're going to teach you and you're going to be a good little cog in the machine. And I mean, whenever I hear people, you know, make the bootlicker comments and just, you know, the NPC kind of default comments where they just, they default to some script that they haven't thought about, you know, they just learned it at one point or another. I mean, that's all I think is, well, that's depression school model. That's just public schooling. I mean, this, this is exactly what you're supposed to be. Snap out of it. I did. There was at one point in my life where I was like that snap out of it. All right. Come on, smack yourself in the face a couple times. Do what you got to do. Microdose some psilocybin or something. Come on, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Mance, uh, you know, thank you so much for all this information. A lot of it, you know, great. And hopefully will help myself and everyone else spread the anti-war message a little bit better because there really, I don't think there's much more that's important than that. Uh, Mance, Pete. Uh, or I guess Pete Mance Raider Raymond, trying to get that down, um, is uh, the host of the Free Man Beyond the Wall podcast website, freemanbeyondthewall.com. That and his Patreon and his Minds account will be linked on the show notes page. Mance, is there anywhere else you want to send people or anything else you want to plug? Well, the the books are available on Amazon under, under Mance Raider. Um, also, if you want to buy the books and you want to use cryptocurrency, my website, freemanbeyondthewall.com forward slash store. You can actually buy the books only for cryptocurrency on there. And you can actually join my Patreon. Um, you won't be able to get into Patreon, but I can link you to everything that I give on Patreon um, on my website for cryptocurrency. So Patreon doesn't allow you to do that, but on my site I will. And I'll make sure that you get every benefit that you would get through Patreon. So it's uh, patreon.com forward slash Mance Raider. All right, Mance. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Take care.